It's no secret that I've not been historically the biggest fan of the Toyota Fortuner. And now that the Everest is on sale, I thought for sure that would be the death knell in these incredible Fortuner sales. But the sales continue and the Fortuner keeps selling and the South African masses love it. So I'm here today to find out why South Africans love the Fortuner so much and what's new on this, the 2023 model. This is going to be a short tour because here is where most of the changes on the Fortune have taken place. And I've got to say, it looks sensational. No longer does it have that overbite look. And now you've got these fancy indicators, front and back as well, that just gives it a modern, imposing look. For a car that's not been completely changed and overhauled for this year, it's an impressive looking upgrade. Wow, that does look cool, doesn't it? This is the 2.8 GD6 VX, which is the top spec model and the one that everybody seems to buy. You're looking at just under a million rand for this vehicle and installments will be around 20,000. But remember, if you are in any high risk areas, you might pay a little bit more in insurance. I'm speaking to you, Joe Burgers. Well, I actually drove into these dunes in two-wheel drive mode with no lock diff, no nothing. I haven't even deflated the tires. So, time to go have some fun off-road first. Here we go. Okay, maybe I should engage four-wheel drive. Recently, I've been asked to judge the Bucky of the Year Award, and one of the interesting things that I didn't realize was very important to South Africans was fuel economy when towing. And even when playing in the dunes here today, I'm still getting about 10 liters per 100 with under nine totally possible. Yes, of course, it's a little bit higher than the claim figures of around 7.9 in the mid eights, but still very respectable. It is also unbelievably capable when you eventually stick it into four-wheel drive mode. Now let's talk about the experience behind the wheel. Firstly, you've got a rear-facing camera, you've got the old school infotainment system, which works really well. That has always been the big drawback for me when it comes to the Fortune, especially when you look at the Ford products that are now so modern and up to spec and date, kind of makes all of this look old. And I can see why there's such a mass appeal because there aren't any surprises in here, unlike many of the new modern infotainment systems. Mm, overtaking talk is of course adequate. It's not gonna blow your hair back and don't even try to use these paddles, but it's still good. I remember when I first experienced this wooden trim on top here, which was later changed. I didn't like it, but now I do. One of the other things that Toyota owners really like is the storage ability. You can put your water on the side here. You can put your things in this relatively big cubby hole and big storage bins. And then you've got the side cup holders, which is one of my favorite things in the world. It's the little things that make this a very practical car for the family. And don't forget, it's 
got those two seats at the back. And I don't care what anybody says about that. Most journos hate it. But Toyota South Africa fans are okay with it. At the back, the seating is just as comfortable and backseat passengers have their own climate control and USB-C ports. Safety is a big concern in a car like this. Of course, you get the usual seven airbags in this car, which makes it a not only safe proposition, it just adds to that broader appeal as to why, even though I'm interested in getting something else, many people eventually end up with this. The numbers don't lie. Last month, this car sold over a thousand units, which is more than three times that of the Ford. My personal biases aside, I still don't really like this car, but I do have to admit that it is very, very, very good. And if I was spending my own money on a 4x4 with my own depreciation, my own insurance, my own cost of living, and my own trading down the line, 900,000 might be very well spent on a Toyota Fortuner. Welcome back to Ignition GT. For many years, the Toyota Fortuner has been sitting pretty at the top of the Bucky-based SUV segment, but with the recent introduction of the all-new Ford Everest and an updated Isuzu MUX, the pressure was starting to mount against this domination. Toyota have answered with a comprehensively updated Fortuner, but is it still good enough to keep the opposition at bay? It is heating up. Mm. It is heating up. I mean, think about what Ford has done with the Everest. So um, I think uh, it's not surprising that Toyota did what they, do, they did. They actually had to go back and work a little bit harder because it, it used to be easy. I mean, people would just buy it because it's a, it's, it's a Toyota and um, you know, we all know that it's, you know, it's, tru it's a trusted brand. Mm. So now they know that they have to give it um, a little bit of a face, like, you know, and I like what they've done with, uh, with the front. I mean, the front grille, uh, the headlights. So, so it, it has a presence now. It's no longer just an SUV version of the Hilux. Mm. It has a, a character and personality of its own. And I love that about this car. Those LED details that they've added now mm. really makes a difference. Mm. Greg, what do you think? No, definitely. You've, they've, they've had to find a way to you know, stand out on the road and be as aggressive as what the Everest is looking at the moment. And I think they've done a really good job. It's like this formidable stormtrooper coming towards oh, you, yeah. just <laughs> with the way it looks. And I think that those daytime running lights have done a, a really good thing for the Fortuner. Yeah. Um, I mean, the back is still quite similar, but they've been able to give it also a bit of detail on the side, so it makes it look a little bit wider mm. than what it was before. A bit of trick on the eyes, but I think that it looks really good. True, very true. You now, yeah. I, 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 you've, I can't unsee what you've now said about the Stormtrooper because That's I never it. thought about it. And now, actually, you're so yeah. right. It does have that look. But it's one thing for the car to look good on the outside. What does that translate to on the inside? How does the car drive? How does it feel? Because if there's one thing that that Everest has gotten right, and even the likes of an MUX, is that they feel like premium SUVs. You don't get that bouncy, bucky feel anymore. Absolutely. I agree with you. You know, I, I, what, the one I had on test that they, that... I don't know what color. Maroon. Oh, maroon yeah. color. Yeah. That maroon color. Yes. I thought it was just warm and nice. comforting. And the fact that, I, like I said, I, I live in the Bundus. Mm. And then in the Bundus, you just want to be comfortable. Yes. So as soon as I was on the gravel and it felt so comfortable, the, the, the suspension uh, is also one of the, the, the highlights. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, being, being fresh into the Fortuna for me, because mm. this is now the for first Fortuna that I've had the chance of driving it. I was very impressed, uh, especially when it came to the drive quality in that because, you know, everyone says the Fortune, the Everest, they're all of these, um, these Bucky-based SUVs. Um, and the first thing I was expecting was to feel the car be a, be a bit wavy and have that, that shudder between, you know, the chassis and the yeah. body and all that, and which Bucky you should be like yeah. expecting. <laughs> and I didn't get any of that. Like you said, it does give mm. premium SUV vibes to it. Mm. Going into the interior, Again, the, the maroon, I think, adds a bit of uh, premiumness mm. to what it's, it's a color that you kind of 
uh, that you associate with premium and I think that was a good decision from yeah. there and from a seating point of view and comforts I think it's really good and I can see why people and South Africans love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> what would your pick of the bunch be when it comes to that entire range? Because now we've still got the 2.4s, we've got the 2.8s. What do you think is the one that you'd go for? I'd, I'd, I'd live with the 2.8 mm. any time. Okay. There is nothing wrong uh, uh, particularly with the 2.4. Um, I just feel like with, with the kind of other industry that I'm in, mm -hmm. the 2.8 works out much better because you know it's it's Tokyo, it's mm -hmm. it's got more power, and uh, you know I need to pull things sometimes, oh, yes. you know. Uh, so I I find that uh, the the 2.8 really works quite nicely. That's where the 500 newton meters comes in. Then handy. it comes in handy. Yeah, it comes go. in really handy. Great word. Are you also taking a 2.8? Let me guess. 100% okay. I would take that, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the torque delivery is really good. Mm. Uh, the 150 kilowatts too, so it's got the speed that you need. It's got the pulling power. Um, I think that should be the only option. Hmm. There's a lot of choice, but... There's a lot of choice. We have to move on, but it's good to always chat about this because it's a nice reminder to know that the Toyota Fortuna is still very much the manure in the range. It is. <laughs>